We're going to play some blues, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back in Rhodes. It's the third time that you're going to play here. What memories do you have about this festival? Well, uh, the first uh, the first time we played here was uh, probably in 2002 or 2003, and it was in another building. And uh, I just remember that that was it was the best audience that I can remember playing to in anywhere in Germany. It just a overwhelming great response, just a great vibe, nice people, you know. People in this town must be real music lovers, and uh, so they really made us feel very appreciated. So that's what I remember the most. And of course, the last time was we opened for Eric Burden in this building here, and, and that was memorable too. It was a great night. So there seems to be a special connection between Rick Vito and Germany. You played the first big rock palace night back then with Roger McGinn, and have been touring quite often till three years ago or so here in Germany. Yes. Uh, I first came here in, in 75 with John Mayall, and we toured all over Germany, and uh, and then two years later with Roger McGinn. You say McGinn, I say McGuinn. Um, and that was the very first Rock Palast, which I, uh, I often thought that uh, his record company, CBS Records, they didn't realize the impact of that television show because so many millions of people saw us and remember us from that television show, but uh, they um, they didn't capitalize on that, which is a shame. We could have we could have done a lot more work in in Europe before uh, before it disbanded. It tr just was the DVD released last year, and it got quite some media attention. Yes, I I, I saw that. That's, uh, I'll have to get a copy. And now you're back here in Germany. You haven't been touring in Germany. With your own act, now you've been here with uh, the Mick Fleetwood Blues Band, so it's kind of restarting your own career. Well, um, you know, I never really feel like my career, my solo career, you know, dries up. But I, I, it's just that I, Mick and I, joined forces in that thing. It really was the Mick Fleetwood Blues Band featuring Rick Vito. So I was still putting product out in Germany and touring in Germany. But uh, I had moved to Hawaii because the, the band and Mick all lived in Hawaii. And um, so it was difficult for me to do other things apart from what I was doing with Mick because we were so involved for a couple of years there. And uh, so that's why I, I, I didn't come uh, during that time on my own. And what about a new Rick Vito solo album again? Well, uh, I do have a record that's almost finished. It just wasn't, you know, I want it to be just the way I want it, but I just didn't get it all the way yet. I still need some some more songs. I think maybe another three or four good songs and uh, be ready to put it out. Is it going to be the way we know you for many years, or is some, uh, something different? Well, uh, if I put a, uh, a record out for the German, for, with the... Uh, Hypertension Music, it's my German label. I would put it, I would make that music 
kind of all along the same lines of what, of what I people are used to me doing. Pretty much blues, blues rock, slide guitar, that kind of thing. I'm also interested in other kinds of music, and I would do records in a different style, but maybe not put it out as a Rick Vito solo record, maybe with another name or something. Mentioning guitars, you have one beside you. Yeah. It's one of those guitars you uh, designed yourself? Yeah, I designed uh, quite a bit of it. It's kind of a collaboration. Um, my influence is the Art Deco aspect of it, you know, these, these streamlines and this headstock and the tuners. And, um, and then uh, Na uh, Reverend Guitars, Joe Naylor, uh, this is his body style. And we collaborated on, you know, it's about, you know, his ideas, my ideas all joined together in this one. But it basically started with a Les Paul that I customized and made look very much like this guitar. And uh, so he really liked that guitar, and we decided we'd put something like this out. It's the second time we put out a Rick Beater's signature model, and the first time uh, it didn't sell so well. It was a little uh, overpriced, too. So we made this one affordable. Last question, Rick. Well, what can your fans expect tonight? you got a trio being on stage, but... Uh, It, uh, the soundcheck sounded like it's going to be it won't be that loud. Well, I hope it's not too loud. Um, you know, we try to keep to the to the more of the pure kind of blues roots, and uh, that's that's I've always felt more comfortable with a smaller band and a, and a you know not so loud. Let the PA do the work, but we just travel with small amps and uh, and keep it simple and just let the let the feeling and the, and the the songs and the groove, you know, make the people move. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah.